The Mariners have picked up yet another interesting reliever as well as an outfielder whose younger brother just so happens to play for the football team across the street. We'll tell you about both of them coming up here on the Locked On Mariners podcast. Colby, hit it. You are Locked On Mariners, your daily Seattle Mariners podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Ahoy, sailors. It is Wednesday, February 7th, 2024. This is Hiding is Allison. Colby Patnode for the Locked On Mariners podcast brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. And right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 winning bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On. That's L-O-C-K-D-O-N to get started. Thank you so much for making us your first listen. Subscribe, like, and turn on alerts if you're watching on YouTube, or subscribe and leave a five-star review on your preferred podcast platform if you like what you hear. And if you're part of the crew and rock with us every single day, let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. And if you want to hear from us even more, please consider signing up for our Patreon. You can now get a free seven-day trial to check out the show. The link, as well as our social accounts, is in the description of this episode. So the Mariners have made a pair of waiver claims over the last couple of days. We're going to tell you about both of them on this show. And we're going to start with Colin Snyder, the right-handed reliever. The Mariners claimed off of waivers from the Arizona Diamondbacks. And Snyder is someone that's been on your radar, Colby. So tell us about him. Colin is, uh, he's an interesting arm uh, that was now been DFA twice. So a uh, second yep. shot for the Mariners to claim him. Uh, it's a profile that's very Justin Topa-like. It is a sinker and a slider. Uh, the, the sinker's 93 to 97. Uh, was a pretty good run. Uh, it does not generate any swing and miss. And that's kind of one of the issues. Uh, the slider is, it's a good slider, 36% whiff rate. Um, he throws from a, it's called high sidearm uh, arm angle. So there's some deception. Uh, he's also been working on a cutter for the last few uh, years. He introduced it last year to some mixed results and he's been working to kind of um, solidify that pitch. The sl- the cutter is, is about, you know, 90, 91 miles an hour uh, sliders in the eighties. So there is a, a clear difference there between the two pitches. Um, again, it's the three, it's a three quarter uh, or well, low three quarter high sidearm kind of arm angle there. Uh, he gets a lot of ground balls. He mm-hmm. avoids hard contact uh, and there's promising numbers from the slider in terms of that potentially being a swing and miss pitch. So uh, he's definitely more of a middle reliever guy, uh, Mm -hmm. but this could be something that the Mariners make one little tweak on the slider, or maybe they find a way to get a little more uh, value out of the sinker. And he is the guy who, you know, pops like Justin Topa because Topa was pretty similar last year, you know, mid nineties slider or mid nineties sinker. And a really like, you know, sweeper, uh, sweeper style slider. Uh, and a changeup was his third pitch. And in Seattle, you know, whether they did something specifically or they just trusted Topa to figure it out, don't really know, but they got really good value out of Topa. And, it's not, and uh, Snyder is a guy who could do that. Um, you know, it's just another arm you throw in the pile. There's no guarantee that he uh, he makes it, mm-hmm. uh, you know, at to any stretch, but he does have an option left. So you can send him down to AAA um, without, you know, having him go through waivers. You can go up and down five times this year. So mm-hmm. uh, it's good coverage. Uh, we'll see if he, you know, even survives the uh, spring mm-hmm. uh, on the 40 man, but there's some, there's some, you know, upside here of a, you know, above average middle relief type. Uh, and there's, you know, pretty good. He's pretty safe, a uh, pretty safe bet that he can get some big, some, you know, big league hitters out a couple times this year when you just need the extra arm, like there's very little downside to this play uh, and there's pretty moderate upside. Uh, So it's, it's a good move. It's one of those moves that you make when you want to make sure you're covered in the middle and he's just kind of gets thrown on the pile with the other, I don't know, eight to 10 arms that are all pretty interesting in their own way. So uh, Snyder, again, because he has the option left, that might actually hurt him in terms of making the opening day roster. Uh, But it does help him in, you know, keeping his 40 man spot. So uh, it's an in- interesting ad. Uh, I, I think we'll see him quite a bit this spring and, and we'll see what the Mariners can do, but there's some uh, interesting pitch data here that suggests that there might be more uh, in, you know, under the hood with uh, Colin Snyder. Snyder has 54 and two thirds innings of major league work under his belt in his career, 62 total appearances, five, four, three case per nine, four, six, one walks per nine, five, nine, three ERA. 
503-FIP, 488-XFIP for a total of negative 0.4 Fangraphs War. Um, so you mentioned how many arms the Mariners have stockpiled uh, towards the back end of that bullpen competition. If you had to rank these guys uh, in terms of likelihood to make the roster out of camp, where would you uh, slot Snyder? Mm. Well, let's see. Assuming they carry eight, which has mm-hmm. been their, you know, their MO. Yep. And assuming that Santos, Munoz, uh, Brash, Spire, and Saucedo are basically locks, um, mm-hmm. and assuming they're all healthy, that would leave three spots left. Uh, both is is almost is probably going to uh, keep his his spot. Thornton's probably going to keep his. So that leaves one spot open. Um, I think Snyder is. I would say that Snyder is somewhere in the middle. Uh, because again, he does have the option left, which kind of hurts him because the Mariners can stash him without losing him where there are other guys who don't have an option left. So you kind of have to make the team or, or you have to cut them unless they're here on minor league deals, which a lot of them are. So, um, I would say that, you know, assuming they keep both and Thornton, which I think is a pretty safe bet right now, I would say that Snyder is probably going to be ahead of guys like Bizarro, probably ahead of guys like even Jackson Coar. Because I think they might want to put Coar down in the minors and keep him stretched out as a starter. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think it's a it's a slim chance, but I, I think it's probably right in there with the the Crable or the the Butchery uh, type of arms. Uh, but he's not at the top of the list, I wouldn't think. Um, I think mm-hmm. I think you know, depending on what the the Mariners want, if they want just some middle help, then he has a shot. If they want a chance at like a high leverage arm then Vargas is probably your best bet there. So I think Snyder's pretty solidly in the middle of the mix, but um, it kind of depends on what the rest of the bullpen looks like. The addition of Snyder uh, filled the Mariners' 40-man roster, uh, but that didn't stop them from making another move today, which required a corresponding move. We'll be talking about that in just a moment, but first, a reminder, this episode of the Locked On Mariners podcast is brought to you by FanDuel. Happy Super Bowl to all who celebrate from FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. If you're like me, Super Bowl Sunday is all about scoring the best seat on the couch, grabbing your favorite football snacks, and placing some super bets. I'm sure a lot of us Seahawks fans are going to be hate-watching the 49ers and cheering on Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs, but the only thing I would love more than seeing the 49ers go home crying is winning some cold, hard cash on FanDuel. FanDuel has so many ways for you to end the season with a W, or two, or three. Not only can you bet on who will win Super Bowl 58, but FanDuel also has bets for which players will score a touchdown, how many points will be scored, and so much more. New customers can join today and get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Just visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to sign up. That's FanDuel.com slash L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. And you're listening to the Locked On Mariners podcast. Thank you again for making us your first listen. And as a reminder, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So the Mariners made a second waiver claim of the week earlier this morning, adding outfielder Kanan Smith and Jigba from the Pittsburgh Pirates. And if that name sounds familiar to you, that's because he just so happens to be the older brother of Seahawks wide receiver Jackson Smith and Jigba. Uh, he's a former fourth round pick of the New York Yankees back in 2017. Uh, He's 24 years old, only has 44 plate appearances to his name at the major league level, and uh, they have not gone particularly well. 135, 250, 243 is his triple slash line, just a 38 WRC plus over that time. But he's hit at pretty much every level of the minor leagues that he has been at. And uh, more importantly, he has a minor league option still. So Colby, what do you think? Yeah, uh, he's an interesting... uh addition to the 40 man you're taking a chance on a guy who has an option left a guy who you can you can ship to triple a and have in your back pocket for when you need it Mm -hmm. and when you look at some of what the mariners have 
lost in that department. Like they lost Jared Kelnick. They lost Deloach. Those are two options. Uh, and Taylor Trammell is, you know, on his last leg in Seattle. And there's a good chance, unfortunately, that he gets DFA'd uh, at the end of the spring. But you still want that kind of profile in the minors because that's a guy who can come up, get hot for a couple of weeks and, and kind of, you know, Mike Ford uh, his way to, you know, regular playing time. So um, the fact that he has an option left is is huge. I don't think they make this move if he doesn't have an option left. I think yeah. the option is incredibly important uh, for, you know, Kanan Smith and Jigba. So, um, it's an interesting profile. There are some, there are some swing and miss in his game, uh, even in the minors. Uh, but the raw power is legitimate. It's legitimate, you know, 65 raw power. The ball jumps off of his bat. He hits home runs. He's got opposite field power for a lefty, uh, which is, is pretty rare. Um, he is, pretty good he's pretty good idea of the strike zone he does draw walks which is a nice little touch and he has hit for average at the minor league level it's just he strikes out a lot uh even relative to the minors and so that's going to go up he's probably at least a 30 percent strikeout guy um i think if you're looking for like absolute ceiling here probably uh eric dames you remember him uh, mm-hmm. big, yep. strong dude, hit some home runs. He had a couple good years from Milwaukee. Yep. Um, I think that's probably what you're looking at here. Uh, I think he is kind of a, a Taylor Trammell hedge a little bit. He is essentially, you know, roughly, I mean, they do it differently, but roughly the same value as somebody as Zach Deloach. So right. if you're He's, upset about, I, I kind of look at him as the Zach Deloach replacement in the org. I think he, they see him more as the Taylor Trammell replacement, but we're sure. splitting hairs. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, he, he's just, he's a lottery ticket who has a lot of fun things, you know, happening in his profile. And this is one of those guys where maybe this is somebody that Brant Brown looks at and says, Hey, I I've got this, like there's a okay. tweak I can make right here and we can unlock something, um, kind of similar to Jesus Sanchez, who, uh, is, you know, as a lefty with, you know, great raw power who can hit home mm-hmm. runs all over the field, uh, you know, and has good exit velos and, it, you know, had some strikeout issues, but can also draw some walks. Like this is an interesting profile. This isn't a, you know, a charity. Yep. This isn't a PR thing. Like this is, there's a legit profile here. Mm-hmm. Is it likely that he's going to make a big impact on the, ma- in the majors this year? No, it's probably, it's much more likely he gets DFA'd than he takes mm-hmm. that bat for the Mariners. But that's not what's important here. What's important here is you're building out the back end of your 40 man with guys who are major league ready, like guys who have produced at the minors. And if you need to go to in you know difficult spots, you feel reasonably comfortable that he is going to survive. He is going to do something to help you. Uh, he's not uh, a great defender by any stretch. He's not a he's not a center fielder. Um, he's a corner guy. He's fringe there, give or take, uh, is what I've read. Uh, but again, you're buying the bat, you're buying the power profile, you're mm-hmm. buying the walks and you're buying possibly again, possibly and this, these are the things that we're not privy to. You're buying the possibility that Brant Brown looks at it and says, I've got the tweak here, or maybe it's not, maybe it's, maybe it's somebody else, right? It doesn't have mm-hmm. to be Brant Brown. Maybe the, maybe the analytics people see something. Uh, and, and this is a guy who in theory could be a tweak away from, you know, being a one ten fourth outfield type of bat like 110 yeah. wrc plus fourth outfield type of bat uh he's a he's a he's a heftier guy he's thick he's six foot like 230 but he moves pretty well it, it's fringe average speed Th- so. does it seem kind of dom smithy yeah yeah um i think he's a better athlete okay than, than smith though um but yeah he's again he's not I think people will think of like Jackson Smith and Jigba and they'll be like, okay, well he's really fast. He's really quick. So I'm sure his brother is similar. No, not really. He's, he's a, he's a bigger guy. He's like I said, he's six foot. He's listed at six foot, like two thirty. um, carries it pretty well. Uh, but you're, there's no, there's no like illusion that he's like this sleek, fast defender. Like he's a slugger and that's mm-hmm. what you're acquiring here, but it's not like he's awful in the outfield, right. he can get the job done. So I think, you know, is there a shot that he's like Luke Rayleigh? There might be like, I, I, I mean, you know, Rayleigh yep. older prospect, right. Doesn't like, he's a bigger guy. He looks bigger, mm-hmm. uh, but he still moves pretty well. And, and, you know, you get the right chance, you make the right tweak and bam, you have a guy who can legitimately help you. So uh, this is a really interesting one. Again, not likely to make a huge impact, but you start looking at what the Mariners are doing 
and just yeah. look at the projected Tacoma roster. There are big leaguers like this is going to be one of the best Rainiers rosters in a while. Yeah. Like there's legitimate options to go to down in AAA. Yeah. Uh, and most of them have at least they either have some kind of prospect pedigree or they have had some success at the big league mm-hmm. level at some time. So yeah. um, you start looking at what the Mariners have done to the back end of this rot, the back end of the 40 man in particular. I, I think we've pretty much know 24, 25 of the guys who are going to make the opening day roster. So it's pretty easy to look at the back end. Then you look at the minor league free agents, you look at, you know, the, all these small waiver claims and these small trades they've made. And you start trying to project who's going to end up in AAA. The Mariners are going to have options in Tacoma uh, if they need to. And that is something that has not really been true for the last few years. And and Smith and Jigba is just a part of that. And and he's an, he is an interesting bat. He really is. I think, I think there's a chance. And again, it's a small chance, but that's what you take a chance on the small chances. Right. I think there, I think he's got a shot to be a, you know, an, everyday uh quality hitter and okay. by the way he also hit lefties totally fine last year so there's not a lot of evidence that he's a pure platoon bat either mm-hmm. so you take a shot maybe it works probably doesn't but if it does it costs you 700 grand to try that's nothing mm-hmm. um you might have seen that he got an assessment over at driveline earlier on in the off season. i was told earlier this morning that he has stayed in the washington area uh, and has been working out uh so he's pretty familiar with the uh with the location and everything and uh whether he's in seattle or in tacoma it's pretty cool that he's going to be able to play in the same state as his brother so and, and i'm sure they're going to be able to assuming that he stays on the he roster makes the right? team, like, yeah yeah yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. assuming that he stays on the roster. but good yeah. chance Again, but yeah that uh, option is key mm-hmm. but yeah that's uh but that's going to be pretty cool for them and I'm, I'm sure their their family is is thrilled and and they're probably pretty thrilled to to be close by with one another so hey, the mariners also acquired baseball super fan cj stroud today that's right that's right cj oh. stroud his favorite baseball player kane and smith and Jigba, mm-hmm. as well as the uh what did he say the japanese guy who plays on the angels yeah <laughs> so couldn't think of shohei otani but he knew kane <laughs> smith and Jigba. so right mariners acquire somebody better than shohei otani says this <laughs> nfl quarterback that that's that's going to be the title of this episode mm-hmm. and you're listening to the lockdown mariners podcast thank you again for making us your first listen so you look at this mariners 40-man roster now they had to make room for Kenan smith and jigbo by dfa and darren mccacken uh so a tough day for the darren mccacken enjoyer my, my condolences I know Colby doesn't care, but my condolences. Someone, one of us has to be considerate of our listeners' feelings here. I'm very, don't worry, Darren McCacken enjoyer. He's mm-hmm. a cockroach. He'll be back with the Mariners in like five days. He'll probably start opening day for the Rainiers. Like this guy's got nine lives in the Mariners. Yeah, Dar- Darren McCacken cannot be killed. Nobody is going to claim him for right. obvious reasons. He's going to be fine. He'll be back with Tacoma very shortly. See, I'm sentimental sure i care about your feelings more than ty cares about mine apparently so the mariners 40-man roster is um it's starting to get pretty stacked in there right there there aren't as many clear term but sure sure there aren't as many clear like yeah you can dfa that guy you can dfa that guy you can dfa that guy like there aren't that many guys that kind of fit that anymore there's still a Mm -hmm. few but McCacken we're, one. But we're getting closer to the point where you're gonna if you're gonna add someone to the 40 man roster, you're gonna have to make a tough decision. Right. I mean, even this morning when we learned from G Scott that uh Shout Smith out to G, 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 by the way. Yeah, breaking some Mariner news. Good for <laughs> G, Mariners, man. Yeah. I mean, if you guys don't know the story, obviously, uh Jackson Smith and Jigba uh went to Ohio State. Mm-hmm. His uh G Scott Jr., G Jr. He mm-hmm. goes to Ohio State. Also, he's a tight end, but I believe he roomed with. Was it JSN that he roomed? Yeah, with? yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. Roommates they were actually with, roommates. So, yeah. if you're wondering how G Scott knew, right? It's because he knows Jackson personally, and obviously. So, anyways, I went to go look at the like who's the for, like I went to the forty man. And say, okay, well, who's left to DFA? And for the first time, I was like, eh, like yeah, you know, like you could DFA Ty Adcock. Like that, I don't think that's you know going to hurt anybody. You could DFA McCacken, which is what they did. You, you want to DFA Bizarro? He showed some stuff. Like, do you want to DFA him for a lottery ticket? Not do you right. want to DFA him for Blake Snell? 
Right. It's like, right. Mm, you know, Cody Bolton. Right. I mean, you could. Like, I don't think anybody's going to be upset about that, but there's some, you know, Bolton spins a pretty good breaking ball. Like, I don't know yeah. if you want to take that guy out of the organization. And you start going down the list, it's like Lavera, OR. Probably don't want to do that. And I mean, Snyder, maybe. Mm-hmm. Like, I thought maybe he might be in trouble, but you start going down the list and you go, like certainly the position players, the only position player I saw that I was like, Oh yeah, that guy, you could DFA that guy mm-hmm. is Taylor Trammell. <laughs> and it's like, why DFA him a couple of weeks before, you know, spring turn? Why not at least yeah, let him showcase? Just, and, yeah. Just let it rock. Yeah. yeah. So there, there are only like two or three guys on the 40 man where you look at it and you go like, Oh yeah, you could DFA that guy. That's fine. Like mm-hmm. nobody's going to miss that guy. Um, so they're not quite there yet. They're not at, they're not because like, look at the end of the day, if you have to DFA Jackson Coar, fine, you do it. Like it's not a huge deal. You're not like scrambling to trade a guy, right? So that you can respect you know, Jackson Coar. I, I, excuse me. Only one of us has his baseball card, but, um, fair point, fair point. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, anyways, <laughs> so yeah, I, I think, you know, the mayor's 40 man is, is filling out nicely. And, and that makes a lot of sense because how do you know how many 40 man moves they made? This winter so far, so far, 16, 17, 17. Yeah. Well, it's 16 unless you want to count Caleb or because he was on the 40 man for a couple weeks and then he was. Yeah. DFA, so, yeah, uh, 17. Uh, well, we'll we'll do it this way. 16 new members of the 40 man currently. Uh, that right. You just want you just wanted to throw in the Caleb or thing because you didn't want to admit that I was right on my guess. No, I mean, <laughs> it's 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 no, no, totally. You're, you're just like, wrong. You you had your like internal monologue like an anime. You were like, "Oh my god, he got it right." No, you got it wrong. Objectively, you got it wrong. No, they've made seventeen moves to the forty man. Caleb Ward. There are sixteen exist. new. Caleb Ward isn't a real person. Well, I gotta buy his baseball card still. So yes, he is. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, that's that's massive turnover, and obviously a lot of it is the big. It's the Garvers, it's the Hanegers, it's the Rayleys, right. but a lot of this stuff has been around the fringes too, and what they've added on the fringes is better than what they had last year on the fringes. Like they are not in a position where they are going to be scurrying for boy. I sure hope Mike Ford works. Boy, I sure hope Jose Caballero works. It's like, no, if they need, you know, a second baseman. They're going to go and they're going to pluck up Sam Haggerty. And we know what Sam Haggerty can do. They're going to go get Samad Taylor. We're really comfortable with what Samad can do. Mm-hmm. Like we're going to go get, you know, a uh, Kanan Smith and Jigbo. We're going to go get, you know, we're going to go pick up Jackson Coar, who's pitched in the big leagues. We're going to go get Cody Bolton, who's pitched in the big, like the Mariners 40 man is actually in really good shape right now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's getting to a point, And again, we're probably about a year or two away still, but we're getting closer and closer to a point where a 40 man roster crunch is going to be a very real thing yeah. for Seattle. And the fact that it wasn't even a year ago, like a year ago today, we had like nine, 10, 11 guys we could throw off the 40 man without hesitation. Now, like four, I could see maybe two or three. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, the 40 man's in, in good shape. That's a, that's a credit to, uh, Justin and Jerry for, you know, really, you know, going to work and, and raising the floor, which has been a big part of their off season. So does this mean they're done? Because they filled no. the forty man, which, as we all know, that once you fill the forty man, that means you can't make any more moves, as even evidenced they, by today. Yeah, even though they literally had a full forty <laughs> man before they claimed Smith yeah. and Jigba. Yeah. Um. No, I I wouldn't bet they were done. Um. I think they still need another starting pitcher. Like so. Yeah. I think well, you- that that is kind of the underrated aspect of DFA and McCacken is like you know, for better or worse, he was from the outside looking in was kind of one of those guys that was higher on the list in terms of if you have an injury in the rotation Definitely for the worst, but yeah, he was you know, like there, like Emerson Hancock is the first guy you think of, but then after Pretty that, sketchy. is it, is it McCacken <laughs> after that? Cause we don't know what you're going to get out of Taylor dollar. Right? No, let, I mean, we don't even know if he's going to, when yeah. he's going to throw again, like, yeah, we don't, let me just we don't put know it that. The fact that Jerry, unprompted mentioned Reed Van Scooter yeah. as like starter depth tells you that Jerry knows that they need to add some more pitching depth. Right. Because that is not like, oh, we believe in Reed Van Scooter. No, they don't. No Who disrespect to Reed Van Scooter. High a. 
Yes, but he is an 88 mile an hour fastball lefty with mediocre off speed stuff. Like that is not a viable option. And so when you look at Who, who's the other guy both, he mentioned, Tyson Miller. Yes, uh, yeah. I think so. So not a real option. Right. Pretty much after you get by the five, it's Hancock, who, you know, has just been a picture of health and has amazing stuff. Um, that's sarcasm. Uh, no, and then he's, you look, he's being completely authentic right now. Sure. And genuine. Then honestly, the mayors might go to both or Thornton before they go to uh, anybody else in the minors. Yeah. And that's a problem. Yeah. So the Mariners need, you know, a starting pitcher. Um, it'd be great if it was a guy with options. Uh, it'd be great if it was at least a Taylor dollar type. Did uh, Eric Lauer get picked up? I don't think so. I, I think he's still available. So there are some guys, you know, out there that can still make sense, but, uh, I don't think they're done with the 40 man. Uh, again, I don't know if they have any, like what we would classify as significant moves coming, but do I think that there's going to be some more 40 man shuffling? Yeah. Because right. we're going to see more free agent sign over the next, you know, couple weeks and, those moves will necessitate 40 man moves and you just kind of take, you know, like maybe you like Colin Snyder now, but if player X gets cut and you're like, we like that guy more than Snyder, then you just make that move. Like, right. um, but for the first time in a long time, like it's no, like it used to be like, Oh, a semi-interesting guy got DFA. Yeah. You should claim him. Yeah. Now you look at it and you go, I mean, do you have somebody you want to cut for that guy? Mm, right. Maybe, but not, right. not, not a guarantee. Whereas last year, we had a we had half a we had a dozen like people that were like yeah you can DFA that guy that's fine yeah I do kind of wonder if if they are going to do something substantial before opening day they're kind of wait until we get into spring training and see where so. some of these other guys uh, sign and you know because you know maybe the the Giants sign Cody Bellinger right and all of a sudden Mike mm-hmm. Yastrzemski is available when you didn't think he was going to be Lamont Wade Lamont Wade. Or, you know, they sign Matt Chapman and all of a sudden here's Wilmer Flores. Mm -hmm. Right. J.D. Davis. J.D. Davis, yeah. Or even on a smaller end, maybe like David VR, right? Right. Like you just, that guy, add him to your 40, man, because that's depth. So, yeah, I I think you're looking for uh, where pitchers go uh, in Mm -hmm. particular. Yeah. Um, But, yeah, as guys sign, you know, I don't think that the Mariners are going to sign Snell or Montgomery or Solaire, but when those guys sign, uh-huh. the reaction for Mariner fans should be to go look at the, those rosters, go look at those forty man right. forty man rosters, and see if there's something there that might work uh, for you. And I, I think that's what Jerry's going to do. And and I think you know Justin and Jerry are going to be very opportunistic. Uh, they're yep. going to be uh, if the right deal happens to present itself, I think they'll pounce on it. But I don't think that they're going out there and you know looking for another garver level addition i mean if it's there yeah if it's there they'll take it but i don't think that they're going to try and force anything with like trading salaries or anything like that i think they're past that right now mm-hmm. and they don't honestly have that many salaries left to trade like, they don't yeah it's pretty much france or castillo at this point i mean you can <laughs> anager you, nobody's taking anager yep so it's pretty much france castillo and i guess dylan moore but three million bucks is uh, that's probably not going to make the difference between you getting like an impact player or not. So um, we'll see, but no, I don't think, I think they're, I think they have a couple 40 man moves left in them. I just don't know if they're going to be significant. significant. I doubt yeah. they are, or they're going to be more of like the Snyder Smith and Jigba types. Right. All right, that's going to do it for our show. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Locked On Mariners podcast. For Colby Patnode, I'm Ty Dan Gonzalez. Be sure to give us a follow on Twitter at LO underscore Mariners. You can follow me at Ty Dan Gonzalez and Colby at CPAT11. That's CPAT11. You can also find all that stuff in the description of this episode. Thank you again for making us your first listen. Have yourself a beautiful baseball day, and we'll see you next time. Peace.